You don't get close formation with, uh, on your right. A firm four, that's one. Cool. Hey guys, Spud Knocker here, as always. And in this DCS Mill MI24P Hind F tutorial video, we're going to go over how to use the radios in both single player to talk to the AI via the radio menu, and in multiplayer to talk to your wingmen and squadron mates via SRS or the DCS simple radio system. There are four radios at your disposal in the MI24P, and they all have a different method of operation, transmit and receive on different frequency bands, and can be rather hard to find for the untrained eye in the rather busy cockpit of the hind. These radios are also very different from the digital radios found in the modern jets flown by most DCS World pilots, and they can definitely take a little bit of getting used to. So let's go ahead and hop in and get started and get you guys up and running in multiplayer with your hind as soon as possible. Also keep in mind that there is a real possibility that the way the hind works in conjunction with SRS could change in the near future to be more in line with how the aircraft's radios work in real life. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in. <laughs> okay guys, welcome back to the cockpit of the MI-24P Hind F here on the helicopter portion of Meza Airfield in Damascus. We're here with our squadron mate Oreo, who's going to help us demonstrate how to use the radios in the MI-24 in DCS World Multiplayer via the simple radio system or SRS. But before we hop over to DCS World Multiplayer and how to use the radios in conjunction with SRS, we have to first learn the basics of the radio system in the MI-24, so that way you, can, you guys can use it in single player as well as use the radios in the MI-24 via the radio menu system to talk to the AI in multiplayer or single player. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the actual radios that we have at our disposal in the MI-24P. We have four different radios that we can transmit to the AI or to our multiplayer teammates via SRS. We of course have, let's go ahead and expand the SRS radio menu here so you guys can see it a little bit easier. We of course have the R863, which is kind of like our main radio. You can get all the way up to the UHF frequencies on this radio, and it is very, very helpful for mission makers to integrate both fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft together because of that. We have a Jardo 1A radio. That is very, very low frequency radio for talking to, say, infantry over long distances and to avoid line of sight issues. We have the R828, which is another radio that can be great for transmitting to wingmen on very low frequencies. The 852 is a radio that's very much limited to what frequencies it can talk to. It can only work on a few different preset channels that you actually cannot select in the mission editor for the MI-24 and are on fixed channels that you cannot edit, like I just said. So here in our MI-24, we have the aircraft in a state that you would find it if you had just started up your helicopter, you've got your two turbines running, and you've brought your twist grip on your collective to the 100% full power setting, and you have your rotor blades set to about 95% ready for your takeoff. This is going to mean that your helicopter is developing full power via its generators to bring enough electrical power to your avionics systems to power the radios and anything else you may need. However, in the state of the helicopter we have now, we have not yet thrown the switches to turn avionics power on to the rest of our avionics. When you have the helicopter first started up, the only radio that will be turned on by default when the generators come online is your R852. You can use this radio to do a quick check-in with say your teammates or squadron mates or even your wingmen in multiplayer and we can see that the other three radios are currently turned off and are no longer functioning. So let's go ahead and use our SRS push to talk buttons to prove that these other radios are not yet turned on but our R852 radio can in fact transmit. So 
So we can see there that the R852 is the only radio that can currently transmit. So let's go ahead and turn on our intercom system as well as power to the other three radios so that way we can go ahead and start talking on them. We'll throw all of these switches to get all of our uh, intercom, radios, navigational systems, as well as our raw equipment turned on. We're going to leave the raw equipment sound turned off so that way we don't have any bings or bonks in the background of this video that could get a little bit annoying. At this point, we can also come down to the panel that controls our Jardo 1A radio and turn this to the AM position. Most players in DCS World are going to be transmitting on the AM position via SRS, so I recommend having it in that position to help you guys out in terms of finding and talking to the correct people. This is, tends to be because of the fact that most fixed-wing jets that most people fly in DCS World transmit on AM by default, and that's what most people are used to as a result. So as we said, we have our Jardo 1A radio panel right here. We have our main radio, which is gonna be our R863 radio right here, just to the left of the gear handle. And we have our 828 radio just underneath the signal flare panel. And we have our 852 radio, our R852 radio that is, located just to the left of our left and right engine throttles located way down here it's kind of a hard one to see and a hard one to find i definitely had a hard time finding that one when i was learning how to use the radios in this helicopter now one thing that's going to be a little bit tricky to come to grips with if you're coming over to helicopters from fixed wing aircraft in dcs is we cannot transmit on our radio of choosing at any time using various push to talk buttons that's located on our hotas we have to actually select the proper radio to then transmit on via the radio select panel right here. So let's go ahead and open up the controls menu and take a look at what controls we're going to be using to actually transmit on the radio to AI in single player or multiplayer. This is going to be the radio trigger. This is the only transmit button that you have to transmit outside of your helicopter to the AI. I currently have it as set to keyboard arrow left, so that way I can kind of keep it in line with my, radio, my main push to talk button that I use for all aircraft fixed wing and rotary wing. When we press that radio trigger transmit button, we currently have our radio menu that pops up in the top right that of course everyone has used in DCS to talk to the AI. We can see it's currently set to the R863 radio, our main radio, which is located right here, of course. However, if we zoom in on our radio select panel, we can see that we can change which radio we will be transmitting on via that radio trigger button. If we move it to the 828 setting and we hit the radio trigger button, we can see in the top right we're now transmitting on the R828. This is important because obviously we can only get to specific frequencies via specific radios in the cockpit of our MI-24. If, say, we're going to talk to ATC at Meza Airfield here, we probably want to use our 863 radio in order to get into those uh, UHF frequencies to talk to the tower. But if we want to talk to, say, an AI JTAC who might be operating on a very low frequency, we may want to use, say, our 828 radio, which is located right back here. So just keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this. This also may be a slight variation in the way SRS works with the MI-24 in the future, and it just like to match up the way it works in the UH-1 Huey as well as the MI-8 HIP. So let's go ahead and swap this back over to its default position, and then we'll talk about how to use the radios in SRS. Currently, the way the radios function in SRS for the MI-24 is very similar to the way they function in, say, modern fixed-wing aircraft like your F-16 or your F-A-18C. Currently, you can use the radio select buttons as push-to-talk buttons in your SRS to actually talk on multiple radios at your choosing, rather than using the radio select switch down here. 
So let's go ahead and check in with Oreo on a couple different radios to show you guys what I mean by that. And we'll open up our SRS uh, settings so that way you can see the way I have it set. So, so first we'll go ahead and open up those SRS settings. Under controls, I have radio one, radio two, radio three, and as well as radio four and my intercom select button bound. And then in my settings, I have radio switch works as push to talk turned on in order to allow myself to simply use those radio select buttons as my push to talks for those various radios. This may need to change in the future as you get closer to actually using the radios in the correct way if Siri Bob decides to change this to more match the real life operation of radios in the MI24. So let's go ahead and check in with Oreo on R863. Spud Knocker checking in for Oreo on the R863 radio. Good check on 863. So there we go. We see that we're currently transmitting on the R863 radio by pressing our Radio 1 Select button, which we also have concurrently set as our Push to Talk button. All right, Oreo, let's go ahead and select Channel 3 preset on the R863 radio. Affirm, pushing Channel 3. Spudknocker checking in for Oreo on channel 3. Good check, channel 3. Arch that Oreo, thank you. Alrighty guys, as we can see here, we can see that we are currently on the channel 3 for our 863 radio, and it is currently transmitting on 127.00, and we got a good radio check on multiple frequencies via that radio with Oreo. All right, Oreo, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the Jardo radio. Let's check in on uh, 2.000 AM. April. Spudknocker checking in for Oreo on the Jardo 1A radio. Good check, Jardo 1A. Copy that. Let's go ahead and push 2.100 on the Jardo 1A and check in there. Spud checking in for Oreo on 2.100 AM. Good check, 2.1. Copy that, thank you. Alrighty guys, as you can see, we're just simply going through various channels on these various radios, checking in and showing you guys how they work in behind at the moment. Alright Oreo, we're going to move on to the R828 radio. Spudknocker checking in for Oreo on channel zero on the 828 radio. Good check, channel zero. Copy that, Oreo. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and push channel four on the 828 radio. Copy, pushing four. So one thing we have to be cautious of when using the 828 radio and tuning specific frequencies is we have to actually press a button for these preset frequencies to actually come into effect. We have to press and hold the AUT button for a second or two for the tuner to actually select the frequency that is preset on preset four here. We can see that's changed on the 828 radio in the SRS overlay, and we can see that's on 30.00 FM. For instance, let's go ahead and swap it over one more time to number five. We'll press and hold this, and we can see it's now on 32.00 FM as well. Let's swap it back over to preset 4, and let's check in with Oreo. Spudknocker checking in for Oreo on the 828 on preset 4. Good check, 828, preset 4. Roger that, thank you very much. 
Alrighty guys, we're now gonna go ahead and move on to the very small and very hard to reach R852 radio that is located very down low, just to the left of the left engine throttle. Alrighty, Oreo, we're gonna move on to the R852 radio, that radio that's hidden down below the engine throttles and your collective. A firm. Spudknocker checking in for Oreo on preset zero of the R852. problem. Good check on R852. Copy that. Good check. Got you loud and clear on the R852 radio. Let's go ahead and push channel preset channel 3 on the R852 radio. Radio check on preset 3 of the R852. Good check, channel 3852. I hope this video has helped you guys not only learn how to use the radios in the MI24, but also how to find these four different radios in the rather busy cockpit of the hind. Please keep in mind that the way the radios function in SRS could be changing in subsequent updates to the program to bring it more in line with how the radios in the MI8 hip work. I will make an updated tutorial to reflect any changes, but this tutorial should get you up and running in multiplayer with your friends as of now. A big thanks to Oreo for helping me out with this video, and if you enjoyed watching, please give us a like and a subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Please fly safe out there and stay healthy guys.